Right, uh, this is part four of Laptop Collections, this time um, featuring the smaller netbook class machines. So first up, we have this um, thing. It's WM8650, 800 MHz, 256 megabytes of DDR RAM, if it even is DDR RAM. I've never seen DDR be part of any kind of PC or tablet in this case. Right, okay. This one is having quite a few issues here. It's got the old black screen of death issue. Right, um, okay. I'll pause and come back when this thing boots. Okay, so I've got this thing to work now, um, which does result in me bashing the display. Um, well, this could still crash, so I'm not betting on it functioning fully. But this thing does have a difficulty, because it's from China, and because it's a horribly designed piece of garbage. Um, looks like it's... yes. This is one of the worst ultra-portable computers I've used in my life. Even turning it on is a hassle. Let's open the control panel and have a look at the system settings. So, yes. There we go. Um... That's pretty much all I can do. Uh, the Wi-Fi on this doesn't work, so I can't you know, technically go online with it. Not so much memory. The device's name. This is obviously from China. I had to reflash this. This came with Android 2.2 Froyo, and I absolutely hate it. It wouldn't start up sometimes. It would crash constantly when it was plugged in. It was just nah. So I gave up and uh, flashed Windows CE onto it, and it just seems to work fine. I had to install Opera because Internet Explorer is too old. But there we go, that is the WM8650 in all of its glory. Moving on to something a tiny bit bigger. This is the Asus EPC 4G Surf, if you can see there. Uh, now, this machine is unique in its own ways. Most EPCs are crippled, because they're netbooks. However, this one has an ace up its sleeve. It's technically a normal PC, but it has an SSD soldered to the main board. And subsequently, runs its own version of Linux, which I believe is Xandros, or something along the lines of that. Wait for it to boot up. Ah, it's um, it seems to have died, so uh, we're gonna have to get the charger and try that again. Okay, so it's plugged in now, and let's see if this performs a tad better. Um, as I mentioned before, it has a soldered-on SSD of an unknown percentage, and it has. Um, the Windows, uh, not Windows, it's Linux, but for EPCs. So this is for like people who probably have impaired vision, so they need large big icons like this. This is, this is far more usable than a horrible 8650 machine. That's, um, there we go, system info. That's the specifications for this. It runs EPC 10.0.6.6. Uh, this has Wi-Fi issues for some reason. I don't know why. It just doesn't. It just refuses to work properly um, on the mains. This is a quite a good net surfer if the Wi-Fi worked. 
I'll have to test it out with other different Wi-Fi's, but for now it's... It's a cute little machine, but it has its flaws. So, so let's shut this thing down and move on to something a little bit nicer. Um, and bigger than this thing. This is the Packard Bell KAV60, which I found in the library bin, and it still had this thing inside of it, signifying it was barely used. And I think it's brand new, because there's no wear on the keys, there's no wear on anything. And it works fine, it just didn't have a hard drive. So this was a smart person who threw this machine away. Probably because they knew how bad it was. Because, yes, it's one of those. But we can wait for that to boot up. Uh, it has some Intel Atom inside. A few other bits and bobs. Uh, I think this runs... Peppermint Linux 8, because um, all I really asked for was a hard drive. And, uh, turns out my father decided to shove a full-fledged OS on it, which is very nice of him. And it works perfectly fine, it has... has wonderfully, uh... It has a wonderfully reliable little OS that should uh, leave it feeling very happy. So let's um, let that sign on. I don't really know if this has some kind of system settings option. Because um, I don't know. Menu. It might be under settings. Preferences. No, it doesn't. Oh well. Well, that's um. It has an Intel Atom in it and one gig of RAM. At least I believe it's a gig. I haven't upgraded it. I literally haven't touched it since I got it, and it works fine. So just let it shut down. I love the flame red colour that this came in, I'm very happy I've got a red netbook. I've always wanted something that came in red. Uh, I think one of my friends also has a red netbook, it's an old Acer Aspire. Don't know, I'll see if he's getting rid of it. I mean it hasn't got a charger, and uh, a bunch of other bits, so probably it'll end up in the bin. Oh, I might save it. I don't know, I'll have to, ta I'll have to chat to him about it. Um, so this is a very tiny netbook. Smaller, th uh, bigger than the Asus. Uh, but smaller than the one that is coming up next. This one's quite big for a netbook. So I'd say that this... The Packard Bell's probably a sub-netbook. And this is a full-on netbook, the one that's coming up next. So it's taking its sweet time to shut down, so uh, I'm gonna have to... Um, I'm gonna have to leave that be and get a different system. This is the ASU, uh, sorry, Ace Aspire... ZA3 uh, netbook. This has a slightly faster Intel Atom processor. And it runs Windows XP Professional? I think it's Professional. Could be Home Edition, I'm not sure. I'll have to check that in the system settings. But we'll let that boot up. And, um,. Uh, backstory, this used to belong to my grandma. This was her main laptop. She upgraded to a pink Aspire one, which was f slower. And I think it even killed itself at one point, so... <laughs> she upgraded to a much nicer Dell 
latitude um, laptop. Uh, I've also disabled the startup applications on this one, and this is also ten times faster. I also don't mind the wallpaper on this one. This one was quite bland, so I spiced it up. Uh, being a netbook, it has no CD drive, so this is pretty much bare bones. You got your SD card, webcam. Um, you've, you've got little ports. That's a fake SD card. Damn it! I never get, I never find real SD cards shoved inside stuff. So it does still take a while to start up and load stuff. Right, so while we wait... Oh god. Okay, there we go. It's booted. That's the next of this one. It's a bit blurry. That's better. So, that's, um, we're finished with that one. Shut this one down. I think this one should shut down slightly quicker. It used to not shut down fast at all. I had to always leave whilst this thing was shutting down. Okay, let's move on to the next machine, which is huge, but sadly broken. This is a Dell Latitude CSX, which sadly um, suffered nickel cadmium damage, and as a subsequence, uh, needed a motherboard amputation done on it. So this, the reason this is as light as a feather is because there's nothing inside it. I found a replacement motherboard, and it is cheap-ish. I'll see if I can purchase it and replace this one, but at the moment this does nothing. It has a Pentium 3 and it ran Windows XP when I got it. This cost me £5, came with a bag and all the accessories, so this one's quite special. This is a, I think an early Ultrabook, because all the CD drives had to be plugged in using this little port on the side. Um, can't demonstrate that because the system doesn't work, but I do hope to get this working one day because it's a nice little system. Turn it onto the bottom, might be able to get some more information about it. Um, this is most of the information on the system. C600, which, uh, CSX, which apparently needs the same adapter as the C600. So, uh, yes, we shall move on to something that's bigger and does actually work, but has a dead battery. This is an Asus X54C, and this came from Dad's work, as it was badly abused by a dog, as it's got scratches, scuffs everywhere. The charger wasn't given to me with it, because the charger was ripped to shreds. Uh, this computer has seen quite a bit of abuse, and I think was wiped at one point, but this is the OEM ASUS install of Windows, so it comes with a bunch of nifty gadgets. And it's ultra slim as well, this has a Core i7, oh, I don't think it's an i7, it's an i5. Oh great, it's applying updates. No, no it's not.
But it is taking its sweet time to start up. Okay, that's getting really annoying now. Um, okay, so I'll come back maybe when this thing actually reaches the login screen. Uh, this, it's finally um, loaded up because it took flipping ages. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, hold on. Okay. This should work now. Yes, so it has everything a man could ever want on his Asus, uh, oh, what is that? Hi, welcome to Microsoft Edge. What? Oh, fuck no. Oh, sorry for cussing, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, uh, no, no, go away, go the hell away, I don't want you on here. This is the third time this crap has been installed on my Windows 7 machines. Looks like the Wi-Fi does work now. That I've got to delete. Oh, this is not nice. This is like malware. Microsoft is forcefully installing Edge on old systems. So yes, this is the Asus original OS installation. Oh, my camera's getting extremely blocky again. Yep, so let's shut this thing down. Uh, this machine is quite nice. I mean, it's got the high performance mode enabled, which pulls approximately, I think, 5 watts from the power supply. Is a 55 watt, no, 95 watt power supply. So this is quite a beefy brick. I'd love to own some kind of old Windows XP Alienware machine, or Clevo. Although I'd, I'd prefer an Alienware because it's looks cooler. But that is the Asus KAV. No, not Asus K54C. X54C in all of its glory. So uh, let's move on to the fattest computer I've seen in my life. Okay, uh, this is a Novatech 8599, and this is, is a brand new system which is yet to be featured on this channel. Uh, it works perfectly fine when I got it, it contains some quite lewd stuff. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Uh, this does actually still work, and the funny thing is, is it takes a full desktop RAM. Full on DDR sticks of RAM. And this is fantastic. It doesn't have a boot logo, because I think it's some kind of Clevo... Clevo machine. I'm not sure. But it has no boot logo. My camera is really getting jittery now, I don't know why it's doing that. This runs XP Home Edition, Service Pack 2, and, um, I don't know, this has a full dedicated GPU as well. It's soldered to the main board, but it does have its own powerful GPU with its own cooling fan. And the, even the CPU fan is actually a normal desktop PC CPU fan. And this thing, I just call it the vacuum cleaner, because this thing is loud. This thing is the loudest system I've ever used in my life. 
This machine, I don't know what's up with my camera, it's freaking out. Despite having tiny tin cans inside it, the speakers are amazing, and look, this is how loud it is. Yeah, that's, ex that's exactly how loud it is. Uh, this is the Novatech OEM version of Windows. And it will complain because it's not Service Pack 3. Oh no, it's not even Service Pack 2, it's Service Pack 1. Manufactured by Novatech. Which is quite cool, so I'm... Um, this is part 4, I think, done. Uh, this is mostly netbooks and the random PCs that don't really have a place in my shelf. Uh, the next part, as soon as I'm able to fix my camera a little bit better, uh, is mostly crippled and dead machines. And, uh, yes, we shall move on. The hinges are solid in this thing, and the, even the eject mechanism for the display latch is really stiff as well. There we go. It has the Novatech branding on the side of, on there. Uh, I mistook this as a Medion machine when I bought it. This cost me five pounds, but you can see it has the slot for the dedicated fan, the S video, four USB ports. This is like a gaming computer, but not a full-on one because it can't play the game I want. Sadly. But I want to get an M9700, Alienware Aurora, or something like that. That'll be a nice addition to the collection. Full on. 17 inch beast. So yes, that's part 5. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll come back to you soon. As soon as I fix this blooming camera.